Hey everybody, it's Saturday here, so uh, I thought I'd do a video today comparing four handguns. It's pretty popular right now. Um, the first one will be my personal carry gun that I carry every day. It's the Gen 5 uh, Glock 19. I have another video on this one comparing it to the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0 Compact. Uh, there's some controversy in that video, which one's a better carry, um, carry gun. I, I still carry this. I do have the uh, Mariglow uh, Spartan night sights on it. I love these sights. They sit really close to the bore and that's why I like them. Plus there's a, a square notch in the back with a square post in the front opposed to the U notch that's on the uh, HD Trigicons, which I do have HD Trigicons. I like those sights, but I do like these a little better. I do like this one because it does not have the finger grooves, which makes this a little bit more of a comparison to some of the guns we're going to compare this to today. Uh, I've not had any issues with this firearm. I've been carrying it now for probably, uh, when did I get this? Maybe four or five months. I don't know, I got it right after it came out. Like literally like the week it came out, I, I found this thing used with like 15 rounds through it and was very lucky to find it um, at Bud's Gun Shop in, in, I guess, Sevierville, Tennessee. I guess that's where it's located. It's not really Pigeon Forge, just more in Sevierville. So, uh, or Kodiak maybe, Kodak. I guess it is, but anyway, it doesn't matter where it's at. You can look it up and it's online and they have a huge supply of, of firearms in there for sale. Uh, but I found this thing used, a guy had come in and, and bought it and took it to the uh, took it to the range they have there, the indoor range, put 15 rounds through it, even paid for them to put night sights on, which I took off of this gun and put the night sights on my Gen 3 19 and bought the Spartans to go on this because the night sights he had were a different set of Ameriglows. It just had a tritium up front, no tritium in the back. And I do like tritium in the back for a carry gun because it's easier to make my side alignment and, and you know, um, dusk situations. So, uh, but I got very lucky to find this. The next one we'll be talking about again is the Smith & Wesson MP 2.0. I do like this gun. It, it shoots good. I do like the trigger. The trigger is better on the 2.0s than the older generation um, m ps I've not changed the sights on this. It, it has metal sights on it from the factory and I've just not put a, a set of night sights on it. I may wind up putting a set of Spartans on this gun too because I do really like this, this pistol. Um, it's, I do like how it feels in my hand. I do like this grippy texture. And a lot of people say, oh, they don't have a problem with this, but this is really, really rough. And I've not, I've not showed this firearm to anybody that hasn't agreed that this, this texture is just really rough. Um, the only other issues with this one, when I put the medium large back strap on this, when I hit this button, it doesn't fall out. Hit the mag release, the mag doesn't fall all the way out. I don't have the issue with the Glock. When, when I hit the mag release, it, it just falls right out in your hand. Um, I didn't have a problem with this one until I put the medium large back strap on it. It's a little tighter on the sides. And another um, comment, another video, they said the same thing. And I hadn't really noticed that. I went back and put the other strap on it and um, I don't have that issue with that one. But it will not drop a magazine out with a medium large strap. Smith, you need to get that fixed. In my opinion, that's an issue. I like my magazines to fall free. Um, it's not that bad to, to strip them and put another one in, but if I can drop it free and, and slap another magazine in, it's, it's just quicker. Next on the list is the uh, CZ P10C. This is another one I got lucky to find. Um, they were really hard to find when I found this one. Uh, I got it at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which is right beside Bud's Gun Shop in Pigeon Forge. Uh, when I bought this gun, I was really, really anxious to get it because I'd heard great things about the triggers and the ergonomics, and, and this firearm is really, really ergonomic. I do like how it fits in my hand. Uh, I did have an issue. The, uh, the mag release on these are kind of stiff. Uh, they didn't say they did anything this. Well, first of all, let me tell you, when I got this firearm, I was so hyped about getting it because I'd heard so much great stuff about it. Glock killer, great, great, great. I sent it back the day after I got it. The trigger would not reset on this gun without me manually pulling it out. The first magazine went through it, about the first um, first five rounds were okay, the trigger wasn't great, but it did reset. After that, the trigger never reset the first time by itself. You could shake the gun, it would reset. You could pull on it, it would reset. But to fire it and then let off of it, the gun 
is unloaded. I have checked all these before I put them on camera, but as I, as I, you know, handle them from here on out, I'll show you they're unloaded. But as you would fire this and the, and the slide would rack, it wouldn't do that right there. It would not reset. And uh, I sent it back to them. They had it quite a while. I was, they did get it fixed, but I wasn't happy that I bought a brand new gun. And this gun isn't, you know, outrageously expensive. You're getting a, 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 a good gun for the money, I, I do believe, because it's, it's, it was cheaper than a Glock. Um, but I still paid upwards of 500 and some dollars for this or something. And I sent it back the next day and I think they had it five or six weeks, four weeks. They, they had it quite a while and I wasn't happy about the fact that I just bought it, had to send it back and they kept it that long before they got it back to me. But I did get it back. The trigger does work now. And my mag release does seem a little bit easier to uh, release the mags. Um, either side. This is an ambidextrous magazine release. Um, both sides seem to be um, seem to be a lot easier to drop the mag. It was kind of sticky before. With a full mag, it's still kind of sticky. It's really tight, but uh, they did get it fixed. And it seems better. The last one we'll be looking at is the uh, HK VP9. Uh, I actually, I'll show you this one's unloaded too. There's nothing in it. Um, I actually went to pick this gun up, I think the day they released. There was a, a place I had to drive about two and a half hours to get to a dealer that had this firearm when it came out, but I wanted it so bad. I've always been an HK fan. I've owned several HKs, still do. Um, but I wanted this striker fired gun so bad that I drove about two and a half, three hours, um, just to pick this gun up. And... They held it for me and I got there and I bought it and left. I appreciate the, the place doing that. Um, but I, I, I really do like this gun. I like the fact that it's like the P30s. I did have a P30 at one time. I no longer have the P30. Um, I've thought about buying a P30L. Um, I've just not done that yet. I had the regular P30 though, not the L. But if I buy another one, I will get the L. But I like how you can change the, the side straps here on the panels. And then the back strap, you can you can really fit it to your hand. I do use the uh, the large side panels and the medium back strap. I think it just fits my hand really well, and it it's very ergonomic that way for me personally. Um, this one does have the you know the paddle mag release. When I use the paddle mag release, I just shift my trigger finger back and hit it. I don't try to to reshift my grip because where that mag release is, if I do that, I can't quite reach it with my thumb. I have to reposition it. But if I come back like this right here, I don't have to reposition my grip. I can just drop it. And I mean, it's it's really quick. I do like the paddle magazine release style handguns. If you train with them, you can, um, you can really release a magazine quick with these and do uh, mag changes pretty fast. This one, I've not changed the sights on it either. It does have the sights where you um, charge them with a flashlight or light and then they glow. They do glow for quite a while, especially if they've been in the sunlight. I've had these things um, charged up like before I go to bed and then whenever I get up, you know, they'll still be glowing real faintly, but they'll still be glowing a little bit. You could actually, you know, when you're asleep and you wake up and your night vision is, is really good, um, you can still make that out. So if something went bump in the middle of the night and you've been asleep for two or three hours, you could probably still use these sights, no problem. So that's the four handguns we're going to be uh, comparing today. I'll give you my opinion on each of them. I like every one of these guns on the table. Uh, so this should be a good, um, good comparison. So let's get down to the table and, and start the video. If I can get it down there. There we go. Okay, sorry you can't see my face in this video, but you know, it is what it is. I can't have the camera everywhere, so we're going to do it like this. So I actually have my scale out here. So zero it out. There we go. First up is the uh, CZ P10C. And it is one pound, 9.7 ounces. Next we'll do the Glock Gen 5. And it is one pound, 8.2 ounces. So the Glock is just a little lighter. Next is Smith & Wesson M&P Compact. 2.0, 1.8 1 
uh, or one pound, 11 ounces. So it's actually a little bit heavier than either one of the other two. Next is the H and K VP nine at one pound, 10.6 ounces. So in terms of weight, you have the Glock, which is the lightest, the P 10 C, um, I believe it was next. Let me double check that. Yes, it was next. Then the Smith and then the HK. As far as the widths, if you go to the widest point on the Glock, which will be your um, Ambi slide release, you have 1.319. The widest point of the um, CZ is going to be the same place. It's actually 1.2, so it is actually a little narrower than the Glock because these um, slide releases are tucked in tighter than the Glocks. Smith's going to be the same place, I do believe. Yes, it's 1.3 uh, for the Smith. How much was the Glock? The Glock is actually just a little bit narrower than the Smith, just a hair. And I feel like this is probably gonna be the widest. Nope, 1.2. I really figured as far as this stuck out right here, it was um, it was gonna be the widest of all of them. And as far as the widths go, you're looking at the CZ, the HK, the Glock, and then the um, Smith, or the CZ, HK, Glock, Smith. Um, these are very minimal changes it's not going to affect you carrying it either way the the small minority of of the difference is just literally hardly nothing next we'll do the links we'll actually just set these up for the length i'm actually to do the links i'm going to set the back end of them up and just get them right as close as i can um i'll actually bring the camera over here so you can see right above it um you can see the Glock is the shortest. Then it looks like maybe the Smith by just a hair. Let me push it back a little bit. The Smith and the Glock are almost even, but they're not quite. Then it looks like the, the CZ is next and the HK is the longest of the group. But yet again, length really isn't what matters when you're carrying. The height of the magazine is. As you can tell right here, the Glock and the Smith are the same identical length and grip. So they, they are um, going to be the two that you can probably conceal the best because your, your grip is where you will print if you print um, while carrying. Next, the CZ is actually shorter than the HK, and the HK is the tallest of them all. And the CZ is not that much different than the other ones. You can probably conceal it fairly easy. And you notice here the HK is actually getting quite a bit taller than the other ones. Um, the HK on the grip length seems to be more like a Glock 17 to me. The only difference is it only holds 15 rounds and your Glock 17 holds 17 rounds, of course. So that's kind of a disappointment that they couldn't make the grip a little bit um, shorter. Um, don't beat me up on the HK fans. It is what it is. Um, if you're only going to put 15 rounds in a magazine, you should be able to compete with other companies. I mean, I like HK, don't get me wrong, I like this gun, but the fact of the matter is, if these people can do it, why can't you? So, back to the next part, just the ergonomics of them. So, which one of these guns feel the most ergonomic? The Glock, without the finger grooves, I do like it, but it still feels um blocky to me i i mean i like the glock i do shoot the gen 5 very very well um but it's still a glock it's it's got a blocky feel to it um and and it is what it is uh, they're known for the reliability not necessarily the ergonomics and um i've shot a glock for many many years uh, it's hard telling how many thousands and thousands of rounds I put through Glock, so I shoot them fairly well, but the grip angle and the blockiness, some people just really don't like that. The Smith is very, very ergonomic. I really like how this gun feels. The double-edged sword of the texture um, really locks it in your hand, but it also makes it really rough to carry. So, you know, I like how it feels in hand. I don't like how it feels against my hip. 
So that double-edged sword is something you've got to either deal with or fix by sanding down one side, which I do plan on doing as soon as I get my other grip in. Um, I need to call Smith & Wesson back. I've just been too uh, busy to do it. They sent me one, but it was for the full size 2.0 and not the compact. So I need to call them back and get the other one, other one brought in. But as far as the feeling of the gun, this gun points very, very well. I mean, whenever you, whenever you bring it up, your sights are on. Um, so ergonomics on this gun is great. I, I, I really, really like the ergonomics of the, the M&P. The CZ we talked about earlier, it's the same way as the M&P. Whenever you bring the gun up, the sights are right there. You don't really have to hunt for them. That is something that you have to get used to on a Glock. If you've never shot a Glock very much, you may be hunting for those sights because of the grip angle. These are more like 1911s where that's got a totally different grip angle. Um, in my opinion, a 1911 is the best filling gun you can actually buy. Um, they're one of the best shooting pistols you can actually buy. I do have a 1911 STI 9mm and uh, I love that gun. It, it's the greatest shooting gun I've ever shot. Um, it's very, very accurate. I've made some stupid shots with that gun, but that's neither here nor there because that's not one of the ones we're we're reviewing today, I just thought I'd throw that in, and that's why these guns feel so good, is they have that, that same style grip. Um, I do like how this grips in. The way this, this tail is made right here, um, I don't want to call it a beaver tail like a 1911, but it, it, it's really an, uh, a tail on the back of the gun. It really locks into your hand. Your hand goes deep into this, and that slide sits way, way down. Um, one thing I do like about CZs that this one doesn't have, I like the reverse slide rails that they do put on some of their guns. I have a, a, a CZ P07 that has the reverse um, slide rails. That's a very good shooting pistol. It's a very flat shooter and the recoil is very, very manageable because of that. But they did a good job on this. By, you can just see how far down. I mean, my hand is just almost at the slide right there. And the way this, um, this beaver tail back here is actually made. It actually helps protect your hand so you don't actually get slide bit. Um, between this one and the M and P, I don't know. I, I really feel like the CZ locks into my hand a little better just because of how deep this undercut is right here. Um, it really, really locks in. If you look at the HK, it has that same deep undercut right here on the back of the grip and you can actually really get a, get a good feel on whenever you um, change out these back straps and find the ones that per perfectly fit you. But even by doing that, um, the front to back on this, and I know I could put the large back strap, but when I do the large back strap, it seems like it makes it too wide, is a little, little bit narrow for me. And like I said, if I go to the large, it seems like it's too big then. So. The gun doesn't perfectly fit my hand as much as the CZ does. The CZ, in my opinion, this is my opinion, and I guess you're watching this video for my opinion, but uh, the CZ has the best feeling ergonomics um, of any gun on this table for me right now. As far as the trigger goes, um, the Glock did actually make their trigger a little better on the the uh, Gen 5s, I did do the, the Glock trigger job on this where you take it out and polish everything up and uh, make it a little bit smoother. But uh, I don't have a trigger gauge. I've been meaning to order one. I'm sorry that I don't have that. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna go by feel. Um, if, I, if I feel this one, it feels fairly crisp. This one feels squishier. It's not bad. It just doesn't feel to break as clean as the Glock does. Um, we'll do it again. Yeah, it's just kind of smooth all the way through. Whereas when the Glock comes up, you actually feel the wall you hit before it breaks. You know where it's gonna break. And the Smith, it's, it's more squishy. You don't actually know exactly where that wall's at. You go into the CZ. The CZ has the best one out of both these. Um, you'll hear that everybody say how great the CZ trigger is. And the CZ is very, very nice. If you go to the HK now, HK has a good trigger. 
In my opinion, the CZ still beats the HK. They'll be debated um, for history, you know, and I don't have a Walther. People say the Walther triggers are really, really good, and um, I've thought about buying a Walther a few times, but it always seems like something else comes up that I want to buy, so I don't ever um, buy the Walther. I always buy like the HK and then the CZ come out and then the MP 2.0 compact come out. So it always seems like something else is coming out same time that's coming out. So I I just have never bought a Walther. But out of these four pistols, the CZ for trigger um, wins for me. Um, slide serrations, we go to the Glock. Glock put this new um, finish on their, their Gen 5s. I do like to, to press, um, check my guns. This is slick down here. I may actually, excuse me, wind up sending this uh, slide off and having some mill work done on the front. But uh, it is very, very slick. Um, the coating's very slick on it. It's hard to press check on the on these. If you go into the Smith & Wesson, they, uh, they do have some small serrations right here. Um, it's really kind of hard to get a hold of, but it's still better than the, uh, the Glock. So, you know, press checking these are not, not bad. You go to the CZ, it is far superior for press checks and serrations. Um, it's, it's as far as, I'm just looking at press checks now. As far as press checks, it has these um, serrations up front that are really, really aggressive and it's real easy to get to. You go to the HK, they also have the serrations up front. They're, they're pretty tactile also, so it's pretty easy to press check an HK. Let's check out the back serrations now. Um, the back serrations on the Glock is just like the front. I mean, it's, it's better than the front, of course, because it actually does have serrations where the rest of them doesn't. But um, the gun coating is still pretty slick. I'm not, I'm not dogging that out because I do believe it's a good coating. I don't believe it will rust, but uh, it, it is a little harder to get a hold of. These scallops in the Smith & Wessons, I've always liked this look. They're always real aggressive. You can easily get a hold of the Smith & Wessons in the back um, to rack a slide. So uh, the serrations in the back of the Smith are very, very nice. If they would have put those all the way up on the side here, this gun would probably have the best serrations of all of them. Over to the CZ, um, the back serrations, just like the front, they're very deep and very um, aggressive feeling. You can get a hold of them well and, and rack the slide on this gun just as good as you can the front. Like I said, if Smith had them up front, it'd be hard for me to pick one of these two uh, between those. And your HK is the same as the front also. It has the same identical serrations in the back as it does the front, and it does the job. I'm not knocking HK, it's just I really think CZ has the best serrations out of all these next to the Smith & Wesson for the back. Now, if you're just doing press check, the HK and the CZ are better at press checks than, than either one of the rest of them. Now let's move on to the sights. I do like HK sights. I like the fact you can charge these and they will glow. The ramp right here really makes it hard for one-handed manipulations. Uh, there's really nothing to catch on your clothing or shoe or barricade or whatever it may be. It would just slide right over it. So one-handed manipulations with the HK would be very difficult because of this Novak style sight. The CZ does have a little ridge right here that you can actually catch stuff on. So you can actually grab this on your clothes and uh, shoe or belt buckle or whatever you needed holster to uh, one-handed one -handed manip manipulate this. I'll get out in a minute. Um, it is not real tall, which I wouldn't want a real tall one because I like my sights real close to the bores we was talking about a minute ago, but it does have something that for one-handed manipulation. The uh, the Smith, it also has a ledge right here for one-handed manipulation. Uh, I do think that's important. You never know when you might get shot in the arm and, or stabbed or whatever it is, and you might have to reload. And Most times, if you ever have to use your firearm, you're never gonna have to reload, but you might have a malfunction. Malfunctions are probably more common than reloads are in a real life situation because usually uh, if you have to use your firearm in self-defense, it's not gonna go that long that you're gonna to have to reload when you have 16 rounds in your firearm. But in case you do, it does have a ledge there for that. Now this is kind of an unfair um, comparison here because everybody knows the little crappy plastic sights that came on a Glock or come on Glocks. Um, almost everybody in the world that buys a Glock does change their sights almost immediately. 
Um, this one does have the highest ledge here of all of them, but like I said, this is a basically a hundred dollar set of sights that I had to put on this gun. So uh, I did put these sights on myself. I do have sight tools to do that. If y'all would like to see how to change sights on a Glock, um, just let me know in the comments and I can do a video on how to take off the, the rear sight and put it on. I do usually red lock type my front sights, so I probably won't do a video of installing front sights for you. It's pretty straightforward to do that. You just have to make sure you have them lined up. But if you want to see how to use a sight tool for the rear, I can show you how to do that. But in this comparison, comparing these exact guns, if you put on the Spartan sights on a Glock, it does have a taller ledge um, to do one-handed manipulations. Uh, after that, the customization of the grips, you can put on back straps on the Gen 5 Glock, uh, just like the Gen 4. I do not use a back strap on my Glocks. I just use it without it. I like the way it feels without the back strap. The Gen 5 does have a flared magwell, and I do use this grip plug. Mine does have an American flag on it. I think I got this off Amazon, but I do like how that's flared. It does help it lock it into your hand, the way that, that turns out. But um, you can put back straps on these if you have larger hands. The Smith & Wesson, as everybody knows, have always been able to change the back straps on the M&Ps. I do have the medium large on this. Um, Right now, I did just have the medium on it, but the, I guess this is actually just the, the yeah, it's a, yeah, it is the medium large. It actually has part of the beaver tail up here. So uh, you can always be able to change these out. Uh, just like the rest of them, back strap only on the CZ. I think this is the, the one that come with it. It's the small back strap. I, I, it fits my hand perfectly, so I never seen a need to change it out. And I did customize the uh, HK the medium back strap come on it, but it had to think the small side panels and I put the large side panels on to kind of fill up that gap where it's shorter and uh, left the medium back on it. As far as controls on the gun, you do have your ambidextrous slide stops on the Glock. These will wear, you can already see this is wearing, it's getting shiny. Um, this side's not wore as much because it's away from my skin, away from my belt. And you can reverse the magazine release on these so it's not completely ambidextrous. You, have to, you do have to take the mag magazine release out and move it to the other side. And that's about your features on a Glock 19. The Smith does have um, the same as a Glock 19. It does have your ambidextrous slide stops and you can reverse the magazine release to the other side, just like the Glock. The CZ has ambidextrous slide stops like both of them, but Instead of having to reverse the magazine release, you already have a magazine release on both sides. So that gives you a thumb, you know, an advantage CZ on that. The HK, um, ambidextrous slide stops, and since it has the paddle mag release, mag release, it does have ambidextrous magazine release as well because it does have the paddle. So, you know, it has the same advantages as a CZ, but like I said, if you train with HK, you can drop that magazine quicker, I believe, by hitting it with your trigger finger. Takedowns on these guns are pretty straightforward. Most of them are the same. You just pull the gun back, you slide the lever down on the HK, drop this, um, then it comes right off. Pull the trigger, it comes right off. Um, I did put in the uh, VP9 tactical spring on this because they did beef this up for some malfunctions on the regular VP9, so I did go ahead and buy this. I can't remember how much this was. I'm thinking it's like $40 or something, but I did upgrade my spring. Then you just pop the barrel out and it goes together or back together the exact opposite way. Just make sure you got that pop down in there. Line up your slide, pull it back, drop that down, and you're good to go. The CZ took a lot from the pages of the Glock, as in you pull it back. Actually, you don't have to pull it back that far. You actually just pull it back a little bit, drop these down. You pull the trigger. Mine ain't wanting to come apart. There we go. I know what the problem was. The trigger was already dropped. I didn't rack the slide before I did it. Same way with the Glock. If, if your trigger's already reset, you have to pull the trigger. If it's not reset, you don't. And I forgot that I had um, already pulled the trigger earlier. So that's what happened there. And it's the same way with HK. You just take the barrel out, 
and the spring out and you put it all back together. Just like the HK, it just all pops back in, like so. And you put it back, line your slide back up. And remember, if you pull the trigger, you don't have to pull the trigger. I forgot that. I didn't actually forget it. I just forgot the trigger was already pulled. Smith is the same way as the HK. You lock the slide back, pull the lever down, drop this. I always pull the trigger on my, my M&Ps because I'm so used to doing everything else. But there is a little yellow pin right here that if you don't want to pull the trigger, this is the only gun I know that has this on the table. You can push that down whenever you release the slide then. Uh, if you pull the lever down, the slide will come right off and you don't have to pull the trigger. But I'm so used to pulling the trigger on everything else, I just go ahead and do it. I always make sure my guns are unloaded and safety first. I don't have any ammo around me when I'm cleaning them. So I feel pretty safe doing that considering I've done it so many times with Glocks. And it's the same way with the M&P, your barrel comes out spring comes out, put it back together, slide it back together like this, you're good to go. Everybody knows how the Glock comes apart. Just like that. The, the Gen 4s and 5s do have the double spring guide rod, and then your barrel comes out. As you can see right here, some of my parts are, are shinier because I did polish those on the Glock. Right here, you can tell it's shiny. You can also tell this is shiny. We're good to go. So in my opinion, which one of these is the most ergonomic and best firearm? As far as reliability goes, I do believe the, the Glock is more reliable than anybody on the table right now. I've not put enough rounds through the rest of these to really be able to say that, it, that it's better than the Glock. As far as ergonomics and trigger, I do like the CZ better. But I will say this, where I had the problems with my trigger, I don't fully trust this gun yet, which is why I don't carry it. Um, once I get a few thousand rounds through this and see the trigger's going to work perfectly, um, I may carry this gun over the Glock, but for right now, it will not take the Glock spot because I have more faith that this gun right here will not malfunction on me than I do this one. Uh, the Smith & Wesson, I really like. I've stated this before in my other video. This very rough texture right here is very rough against my body. It's like sandpaper. Um, I've carried HK USPs that had less uh, rough texture than this, and I was actually bleeding after a few hours. So uh, I have no doubt that this right here would not, not cause my, my hip to bleed by the time it was over with. So I, I do not carry the M&P yet. Not saying I won't eventually, but for right now, after I get a few more rounds through it and I get this right here sanded down, um, I may start carrying the M&P. I will never carry this gun simply because as long as the grip is on HK, it reminds me of a Glock 17. I just think that's too long for a concealed carry. And uh, the, the narrowness here versus when I put the, the large back strap on it makes it too wide for my hand. I just can't get this dialed in exactly like I would like it to. For some weird reason on my um, P30, I could get it perfect uh, for my hand, but I this one's just a little bit different in some way, shape, or form. And, and I just can't get it just exactly where I want it on the grip. Um, but the length would stop me from carrying it on it. So if, as of right now, if I was gonna say which order would I carry these in, it, it, and I trusted all of them the same, it would probably be my Glock, the CZ, the Smith, and HK. And like I said, once I, I get a few thousand rounds through this CZ, it may overtake the Glock just simply because of the ergonomics and how it feels in my hand and how good the trigger is. Uh, and I would like to put a, a set of night sights on the CZ and then I might carry this gun, but it's gonna take me a few thousand rounds to trust this. I know a lot of people have had this guns and I've, I haven't had any issues out of it, but I did out of mine the first day I had it, like I said, and until I fully trust it, I will never carry anything that I don't fully trust. So this is probably the order I would put these in as of right now. They will all take lights. I do carry an APLC light on my Glock Gen 5. I will probably upgrade that light to the new Streamlight TLR7, which has 500 lumens. I've just not ordered one yet. As soon as I get one in, I will do a review on it. So if you have any questions about any of these guns, uh, just let me know and I'll try my best to answer them. I do own all these. So if you have any questions, I should have enough trigger time behind them 
to be able to answer your questions uh, somewhat knowledgeably. So I uh, hope you like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.